Hello everyone. I am Zhen from Alibaba Group. We propose an optimizing compiler for machine learning training and inference named iStitch. Machine learning compiler is developing rapidly in recent years. They help to translate user-defined computations with domain-specific language frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch to executable programs on hardware. On the one hand, there are various combinations for the computations in machine learning models, and the computations are changing rapidly. On the other hand, a compiler really does not want to deal with all possible user-defined high-level operators one by one, because it is not feasible to enumerate all possible high-level operators by the engineers. To support the diversity and the variability, machine learning compilers usually transfer high-level operators to a set of very basic arithmetic operators, like add, sub, mal, reduce, broadcast, reshape, and many other operators. Here is an example about how TensorFlow XLA compiler deal with high-level operators. Note that XLA is one of the state-of-the-art AI compilers and is widely used in industry. A real norm OP is lowered to more than 10 basic OPs with the representation of HLIR. And then XLA will optimize the program based on the graph of basic OPs. Some OPs are compute-intensive OPs like GEM and like convolution OPs in CNN models. Some other OPs are memory-intensive OPs like Enterprise, Reduce, Broadcast, Broadcast, and tons of other types. Existing machine learning compiler works mainly focus on compute-intensive OPs because many traditional models are dominated by compute-intensive OPs, like traditional CNN models. However, we observe that in modern machine learning models, memory-intensive computation becomes the performance bottleneck. For the five models shown here, which are widely used in today's industry, more than 60% of the kernel execution time is contributed by memory-intensive computations, caused by expensive off-chip memory access. Moreover, large number of kernels lead to severe non-computation overhead, including OP scheduling and kernel launching. We noticed that the overhead could be larger than the computation itself in many recent models. Moreover, the ratio of computing power and memory bandwidth has drastically increased in recent hardware, making memory-intensive computation more important for performance optimization. The most important optimization for memory-intensive computations is kernel fusion. By fuse many small OPs together, non-computation overhead like firmware scheduling and kernel launching is saved, and off-chip memory traffic is reduced. However, existing compilers are not able to fuse complex computing graphs together. For example, reduce OP, which frequently appears in components like layer norm, softmax, and many other. They cannot be fused with their consumers. The fundamental reason is that existing compilers like TVM and uh, XRA use per element input in line to merge producer with consumer together. It is not sufficient to inline the per result of reduce to its consumers every input because it will introduce unacceptable redundant computations. We will explain that later. Fusion code generation for machine learning models is quite tricky due to two main challenges. The first is the complex dependencies at both operator level and element level, especially combined with just-in-time demand. This case shows an example of operator level dependency. This graph comes from a transformer model in industry. This is a subgraph of memory-intensive OPs. You can know that some OPs are consumed by many OPs and uh, some OPs are producer of many OPs. This is a case of element level dependency where there is many to one dependency for reduce and one to many dependency for broadcast. Note that there are various model structures and innumerable customized variants. 
Ad hoc solutions like handwritten kernels in HPC area do not work for memory intensive computations for machine learning. Compiler is the right way to do it, but the two level dependencies and the just in time demand makes it very difficult. Existing words cannot fill such a pattern into one kernel for optimization in this figure. Why all we can do that? The inefficiency of ineffective fusion is that it results in a large number of kernels and there will be severe framework scheduling and kernel launching overhead and off chip memory access as we discussed. TVM, XRV, they all want to fuse more, but the per element input inline code generation will result in heavy redundant computation for many cases. For example, when I fuse this case together, the two power computation will be inlined to the two multiply 128 threads as the input of add OP, causing redundant computation of the heavy power computations. When there are many waves of GPU threads, the redundant computations will lead to severe overhead. But the dilemma is that skip the fusion results in non-computing overhead as we discussed before. Existing compilers like XLA and TVM, they cannot deal with the dilemma. Another challenge is the irregular tensor shapes in real-world product. The fixed code generation schedules in existing works are not adaptive, adaptive to various tensor shapes for memory-intensive OPs. It tends to lead to either too many small partitions or too few large partitions on GPU. This problem is long neglected in existing machine learning compilers for memory-intensive computations. Here are two examples for rule reduced OPs in XLA. If there are too many small rules to reduce, the block size will be too small. If there are too few large rules to reduce, there will be too many, too few thread blocks. To address the limitations of existing works, we propose a stitch. It is able to stitch many small and basic fusions enabled by the current works into much larger and broader fusions. In another word, a stitch expands the fusion optimization space beyond existing works. Meanwhile, we propose shape-aware code generation approach to utilize GPU resource better. We first make four abstractions for OP stitching schemes. The schemes cover arbitrary OP fusion scenarios. It is a joint consideration of dependency, hardware memory, hierarchy, and parallelism. The independent scheme is for kernel packing, where operators are independent of each other. Local scheme is just like input in line in existing works. They are capable to deal with one-to-many dependency. We newly propose regional and global schemes to stitch OPs with complex dependencies together. Regional scheme is to deal with one-to-many dependencies, and the results will be maintained on shared memory for better locality. It is locality-oriented. Global scheme is to deal with any dependencies, and it is parallelism-oriented. The intermediate results will be maintained on global memory. To deal with challenge one, we propose hierarchical data reuse. At element level, the intermediate result for some OPs, like reduce, can be maintained regional on shared memory or global on global memory for their consumers to reuse. At operator level, the data reuse means the intermediate results are reused in multiple consumer OPs. Note that in XR and TVM, the intermediate results may be written back to global map to global memory and then load several times in separated kernels. A cross-grid global barrier is required for global stitching schemes. Here is a GPU kernel example for the hierarchical data reuse. For a graph shown in figure A, XRE forms four kernels. The results are written back to global memory in every kernel. The separated kernels result in kernel launch and framework OP scaling overhead. XRE cannot fuse them in one kernel because the input in line fusion, the input in line code generation approach cannot deal with the dilemma of redundant computation and the skipping fusion. While well, a stitch generates only one kernel with all intermediate results and the synchronizations within this kernel, some results are written on shared memory for their consumers to use with 
intra-block synchronization, and some results are written to global memory with an inlined global barrier. For challenge two, we propose the adaptive thread mapping technique. It packs the tasks in different thread blocks into one block at two directions, that is, resonal packing and vertical packing. The horizontal packing is to enlarge block size to increase parallelisms. And the vertical packing is to shrink block number to support global barrier. For some tensor shapes, it splits the tasks into, in one thread block into many blocks to enlarge block size for parallelism. The figure here shows how the two optimizations works. Because A-stitch is able to stitch arbitrary memory intensive OPs into one kernel efficiently, it chose to fuse as many, as many as possible for stitching scope identifica identification. The only constraint is to avoid the cyclic dependency. It also fuses discontinuous OPs together to further enlarge fusion scope. Note that we do not care about the so-called fusion pattern in existing ver works because we can fuse and deal with any OPs together. To generate efficient code, HDH first divide, divides OPs to be fused together into several groups and identify an, identify an dominant OP for each group. It will apply local scheme within group and apply, apply schedule propagation with input in line between OPs in each group. It finally stitches groups according to regional or global schemes. There is a strategy to choose between regional and global scheme with the consideration of locality and parallelism. This is an example about how the compiler works. Note that this is a subgraph simplified from a real attention-based model. SDH first identifies which OPs could be dominant OPs. A dominant, a dominant OP is either a reduced OP or an expensive element-wise OP followed by a broadcast. This comes from the observation that only these two kinds of OPs need to be assigned with regional or global schemes. SDH will put the consumers of a dominant into a group. All the non-dominant OPs are stitched with their consumer with local scheme, while we will decide the stitching schemes for dominant OPs later. After the basic, group basic grouping phase, ASTitch will try to merge groups if possible. If the code generation schedule can be propagated from one dominant to another dominant with only local scheme, we merge these two groups together. Between the two dominants, we select the one with heaviest computation as the final dominant. Usually, this OP is reduced OP. The other one is called subdominant. In the second step, we first generate the schedule for each dominant OP with adaptive thread technique we discussed previously, and then propagate the schedule to all other OPs within the same group. Note that OPs within the same group are connected with local scheme. Thus, we can apply input in line within each group. In the last step, the thread mapping for all OPs are done, and all we and we know that all non-dominant OPs are with local scheme. We will decide the scheme for dominant OPs and subdominant OPs in this step. We try to check whether the data generated by dominant and subdominant OPs in every block are only consumed by threads in the same block for the consumers. That is, we check the block level data locality. If so, the stitching scheme is regional scheme. Otherwise, it is a global scheme. There's a trade-off between locality and parallelism when decide the schemes for dominant OPs. The last step we discussed about in last slide is called passive block locality checking approach. That is, it decides the thread mapping schedule first, then checks locality. It is a parallelism-oriented approach. It will fall back to global scheme if locality checking fails. We do passive checking for groups dominated by row reduction OPs because row reduction OPs are usually computing expensive than normal memory intensive OPs. 
Meanwhile, for groups dominated by expensive advanced OPs like Power, EXP, and some other OPs, followed by broadcast OP, we will apply proactive block locality adaptation approach. It will match block locality with the producer group first, and then decide that mapping schedule to meet block locality. It is locality oriented and will always choose regional scheme. This is because usually the memory access is more expensive than the computation for the expensive element wise OPs. There are also some other optimizations of the compiler. First, we apply memory usage optimization to reuse shared memory allocation between OPs with regional scheme with the dominance tree analysis approach. This helps to increase potential parallelism. Meanwhile, for launch config configuration, it requires to limit register allocation to meet global barrier. We lose register limit to make the occupancy bound by both shared memory and register simultaneously. This helps to allocate as, much reg as many registers as possible to increase parallelism bound. We implement a stitch as an TensorFlow plugin. People only need to set some corresponding environment variables to enable a stitch for a TensorFlow model. It does not need to modify the model script. The insight in this work can be applied in all machine learning frameworks and compilers. For short, a stitch outperforms state of the art compilers with up to 2.73 times speed up. The baseline includes basic TensorFlow XLA for both inference and training, and TensorRT for inference. Performance breakdown shows that HTH reduces both execution time and non-computation time effectively. The parallelism increases, and the kernel number decreases. Due to the time limit, I'm not able to talk about the technical details in depth. You can see the paper for more details. Welcome to contact me for discussion. Thank you.